Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Patrol is charged with many obligations and responsibilities, including the maintenance of law and order on public highways, the detection of crime and the arrest of criminals, the protection of life and property. An example of the fulfillment of this trust occurred on June 23rd when a newly married couple were camping in an isolated area of the Chiroka Mountains. Come on, Angel. The world is waiting. You can't be waiting for the sunrise. That happened two hours ago. It's waiting for you and me to take a look at it. The top of that mountain. I'm ready. David? Yeah? What do we do with the empty cans? Well, before we break camp, we dig a hole and bury the cans and the leftovers. Oh, that reminds me. Of what? You know, we've been married three days now. So far, every meal has been out of a can. <laughs> what do you expect on a camping trip? White tablecloth and finger bowls? Well, that's not the point. How do I know if you can cook or not? Now, don't you worry. Why, at college, I was voted the girl whose husband would most likely have indigestion. <laughs> Shall we go? Come on. Oh, that reminds me of another thing. I see this is one of your reminding days. No, when we order our Christmas cards, you think we should have it say, Mr. and Mrs. David Carney, or, or just David and Mimi Carney? <laughs> Darling, it's a long, long time till Christmas. Yeah, I know, but you see, if you order them real early, you can get a 20% discount. Just as I thought, I've married a tight ward. Hey, shall we go climb a mountain before you save any more money? Come on. Let's go. Look, there it is. It's the whole world. Just cheers for the asking. Where's the picket fence? Oh, you can get that in a small monthly installment. Oh, darling, there's one thing certain up here, though. Hey, don't get so near the edge, huh? I won't. What's certain? We may not have full course dinners up here, but we're all alone. There's not another person within miles. Oh, this view. It's just beautiful. Honey, step back from the edge a little. I'm all right. I know, but I'd feel a lot safer if you weren't... <laughs> Listen, we can't get panicky about this. We'll never make it if we do. Mimi, can you hear me? Now, listen. I think I, I broke my hip. I, I can't feel my right leg. I can't seem to move it. You'll have to go back and get help. Go back to the car and get help. Mimi, why don't you answer me? Pull yourself together. You're our only chance. Mimi, why don't you say something? Go, go, go back to the road. Get help. And hurry, darling. I'll be all right till you get back.
sorry, Mimi. hurt your head. Can't you hear me? Can't you talk? Fourteen forty to headquarters. Headquarters, bye. What have we got? Fourteen forty just picked up a woman suffering from shock and a bad head wound. Where do you find her? On the Chiroka Mountain Road, eleven miles north of the junction. He's heading for the landfill first aid station. Eleven miles north of the junction. That's practically wilderness in there. I know. Is that the whole story? Walter said he couldn't tell if it was a crime or an accident. I'll go to landfill and check. Throw up a roadblock. Check every car that comes in and goes out. Right. Nasty wound. What hit her? It would have to be caused by a rock or a stone, one that had considerable dirt around it. Can I ask her a couple of questions? You can try. I doubt if you'll get an answer. Miss, I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. Can you tell us what happened to you? Did you fall or did someone hit you? Please try to remember. What hit you? It's no good, Mr. Matthews. Not now at any rate. The blow on the head has evidently caused a loss of memory. Amnesia? Might be more accurate to say total amnesia. Her mind is a complete blank. I don't believe there's a concussion or any other serious injury. How long will she be like that? It's impossible to say. Maybe a day or two, maybe a year or two. Well, we'll just have to find out who she is. That may not be so easy. Well, if we do that, then we can find out who she was with. 
You think she's with someone? Sure. What would a woman like that be doing in the wilderness all by herself? Take a look at her hands. She's not used to rough country. And those clothes. They can take punishment, but they're brand new. I see what you mean. There are two possibilities. She was out camping with someone. Probably her husband. They were attacked by a third party. And number two? Same thing, camping. They met with an accident. Maybe the person she was with is worse off than she is. Get some help. Go back where you found her and start circling. Now, your main objective is her companion. Check the area for anything unusual, like tire marks or a landslide or something that might show that somebody had been there recently. Right. Have somebody stay with the car so we can keep in touch. Okay. What she have in her pockets, Doctor? A lipstick, a compact, and a handkerchief. Oh, great. There's about eight million of these and 12 million of those. That doesn't do any good. Anything else? Not a thing, except a lot of dirt in every pocket. Well, that bears out the accident theory. She probably rolled a long way in the dirt. How are you going to find out who she is? It's going to be tough to do in a hurry. So? So maybe we're stymied. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters. Bye. Stand by to organize a search, either for a suspect or a companion of this woman. No identity. No, there's nothing to. Wait a minute. I just thought of something. I called you back. Ten four. I just happened to think that wedding ring looks almost new. It does at that. Let me see, will you? Yeah, there's an inscription inside. Mimi dash David. And they've only been married for three days. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters, bye. Pick the marriage license bureaus in all major cities in this state. See about a license issued to a man whose first name is David and a woman whose first name is Mimi. Do you know when it was issued? Well, they were married three days ago. Make a top emergency. Ten four. Positions about 10 yards apart. 2150 to 1440. 2150 to 1440. 1440, bye. What's your 1020? I'm back where I picked up the victim. I have three men with me. We're checking identification. We're sure there's somebody in the mountain, probably injured. Get more help. 10 4. The woman's companion is probably still somewhere in this area. When I first saw her this morning, she was coming from this side of the road. So we'll start the search here. Try and stay ten yards apart and circle. Let's go. search of the entire territory was very soon underway but through an unfortunate circumstance the search was being conducted on the wrong side of the road in the meantime an effort was being made to identify the injured woman through the inscription on her wedding ring all right thank you what have you got three so far david stonebreaker and mimi white david fleming and mimi heaton david duncan and mimi friend and their addresses yeah, go ahead. Here's another one. David Carney and Mimi Vance, 662 12th Street, Milford. Thank you. I'm going to start running these down. Get on the phone in the other room. I'll work here. Yes, Mrs. Duncan. All right, thanks very much. 
I checked both my couples. They're okay. What about you? I contacted Mr. and Mrs. Stonebaker, but the number for David and Mimi Carney doesn't answer. You sure it's the right number? Yes, the phone was installed a week ago. Let's see the address, see what I can do. Supervisor, please. Highway Patrol calling. This better be it. It's our last couple. Yeah. Hello, Supervisor. This is Matthews, Highway Patrol. There's a phone listed in the name of David Carney. He's at 662 12th Street, Milford. Can you give me the telephone nearest that address? Extreme emergency. Check with 1440 while I'm waiting. 1440, bye. Headquarters asking for a report. We've covered about two square miles. No results. Keep looking. 10-4? 10-4. No break. And hang on. We got the number of the house right next door. They're ringing it now. I don't say one thing. If there's a guy up in those mountains, he's getting all the tough breaks. Hello? 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 Is this the residence at 664 12th Street, Milford? Yes. Who's calling, please? Matthews, Highway Patrol. Highway Patrol? Do you live next door to Mr. and Mrs. David Carney? I live next to the house they're going to live in. They're on their honeymoon. They've only been married a couple of days. Do you know where they went on their honeymoon? Well, I'm sure it was some mountains. Mrs. Carney told me they loved the outdoors. Was it the Chiroka Mountains? <laughs> well, now, yes, it was. Chiroka. All right, thanks very much. Get more volunteers. We'll need 100 men out there if we're going to get any place before dark. But well, at least we know who the gal is. I'm going to the first aid station and call her by name, see if that rings a bell. Call 1440 and tell them what's going on. Right. I'm glad you're here. I tried to get you on the phone. It might be a good idea to move her. She can't stay here indefinitely. Well, I know her name. I thought maybe we could snap her out of it if I called her Mrs. Carney. Try it. Can't do any harm. Okay. I'll wake her up. Come on. Wake up. Come on. Your name is Mimi Carney, and your husband's name is David. Where is he? Mrs. Carney, you live in Milford. And your new home is at 662 12th Street. And David, your husband, David Carney, he's probably in the mountains and hurt. Otherwise, he'd be looking for you. Now, if you tell us where he is, perhaps we can help. For a minute there, I thought I was getting through. So did I. Is she okay to travel back to the mountains, that is? There's no evidence of internal injuries, just that superficial head wound. I believe it'll be all. Me, a name is Mimi Carney. Yeah, that's it. Any possibility of her coming out of it? That's what we're watching to find out. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to stop her. Why? She's going the wrong way. How do you know? Well, when I first saw her, she was coming from this side of the road. 
I got a feeling somebody's guiding her who knows more about this than we do. I'll follow her and find out. Fourteen forty. Bye. Searching party is organized. Making a final check with you before they start for the mountains. No further information available. Hold the search party. I'll check with Matthews for orders. Ten four. Ten four. I've got to find Matthews. Stay with the car for a while. See if there's anything I recognize. Your husband. Where is he? Try and remember. Where's your husband? Hello, Matthew. Over here. Keep talking. Straight ahead. There's a clearing in a tent. It's where they were camping. Well, search party is organized. Get him here on the double. The men from the other side of the road, too. He's got to be around here someplace. Right. Have him bring searchlights. It's going to be dark pretty soon. Right now. This is Connie. There'll be a lot of help here in a couple of minutes. If your husband's around, we'll find him. Happened, isn't it? You fell off that cliff up there. Look, somebody crawled away from here. That was Matthew's signal. He's found something. We've been searching the wrong side of the road. Come on, this side. Let's go. Mr. Carney. Where's Mimi? She's right here. Mimi, here's David. David? David! Oh, darling, I'm so glad to see you. Everything's going to be all right now. Mrs. Carney. Oh, she's all right. Well, are you going to come with us? Or are you going to go back and check the campsite? Well, I'll go with you. Send some of the other men back to camp. I'm no woodsman. I don't want a searching party looking for me. <laughs> Next week's Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember... It isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Bradrick Crawford saying, see you next week.